In this Wrestle Talk news, more Vince McMahon payments uncovered, wrestlers unhappy at AEW, and yet our latest tease of a Wyatt family return to WWE. Subscribe and enable notifications to always on for daily wrestling news videos, or I'll get Dexter Loomis to weirdly stand outside your window. God, he's intense. Support Wrestle Talk! It's been a rough few months for behind the scenes wrestling, but at least two AEW stars have shown love can still thrive backstage, with Sammy Guevara and Tay Conti getting married over the weekend. In a pro wrestling couple, there were, of course, a bunch of pro wrestling guests from across the WWE AEW divide. Nikki A.S.H. was even one of Conti's bridesmaids. Nikki A.S.H. to AEW confirmed. And a cute video of AEW president Tony Khan has come out showing him hitting some classic white man moves with the happy couple. Do the Tony. Do the Tony. But weddings aren't just a time for happiness. They're also there to make some guests feel very uncomfortable because the happy couple have stayed friends with both you and your ex and you came alone. But Megan decided to bring her new man, Tommy. I hope you're so happy together. And that's precisely what happened at Tay and Sammy's wedding. With former best friends forever, Tony Khan being in the same venue as the man who left him, WWE's Cody Rhodes. With Conti responding to a fan question, showing the American nightmare was indeed also there. Awkward. Quick, dance, Tony! Dance the pain away! The AEW president's issues, however, are infinitesimally small compared to his now departed rival in WWE. Improper use of company funds segue. Move aside, big four pay-per-views. My favorite recurring events in the year is WWE's quarterly earnings reports. I'm genuine. I find them fascinating. I think it's just me, Luke Owen, and Brandon Thurston. So imagine my dismay when WWE announced they're delaying the release of their Q2 earnings. QT, of course, not to be confused with QT Marshall, business fans, of course ended at the end of June. Typically, WWE then release a summary of the previous three months' revenue performance a few weeks later, fire someone to take the blame for falling ratings, then host an investor's call to answer questions the stock market doesn't really care about, like when is Bray Wyatt going to return? Or what really happened in Saudi Arabia? But in WWE the last several weeks, it has been anything but business as usual, with Vince McMahon finally deciding to retire, slash being forced out due to mounting allegations of sexual misconduct against him. In their SEC filing to notify business 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 that their report will be slightly delayed from the original 9th of August deadline, WWE specifically blamed their continuing investigation into the extent of the NDAs Vince paid out, which began back in April as to why. They had already stated back on the 25th of July that certain payments that Vince McMahon agreed to make during that period from 2006 through 2022, including amounts paid and payable in the future, totaling $14.6 million were not appropriately recorded as expenses in the company's consolidated financial statements. And now they revealed they found even more. The WWE statement continues. Since that time, the company has determined that two additional payments totaling $5 million unrelated to the allegations that led to the special committee investigation that Mr. McMahon made in 2007 and 2009 should have been recorded in the company's consolidated financial statements. Together, these unrecorded expenses total $19.6 million. Hey, I'm starting to get the idea that WWE didn't really have to make budget cuts over the pandemic. This this now totals at least six incidents over a 15 year period. Who knows how many more the investigation will find, or how many never came forward. Just like Al Capone, it's the accounting that will likely prove Vince's ultimate undoing. These payments should be considered personal expenses, but WWE's statement implies they haven't all yet been paid by McMahon himself, noting all payments underlying the unrecorded expenses were or will be paid by Mr. McMahon personally. As icky and gross as the sexual misconduct allegations are, the crux of the investigation has always been did Vince improperly use company funds to cover them up? The statement teases we won't know the answer anytime soon, as the special committee investigation remains ongoing. Which also sounds like Raw rolls on! The creative side of WWE has gone an immediate overhaul, with Vince stepping down and being replaced by Triple H to experiment with bold new ideas like consistent and coherent storytelling, basic foreshadowing, and actual wrestling. But one of the biggest annoyances of WWE TV is still there in nauseating sight. The camera cuts. Unfortunately, according to multiple sources, 
That ain't going anywhere anytime soon. Firstly, Fightful Select has reported that the senior vice president of production, Kevin Dunn, the man responsible for WWE's motion sickness house style, will remain in the company for the time being. Although he was very much a Vince McMahon guy and rumored to be the head of his own faction behind the scenes against the Triple H and Stephanie team, WWE don't believe they have anyone capable of replacing him right now, like, I don't know, a monkey with a camera. And secondly, even more depressingly, even if they did, the camera cuts likely wouldn't change. Brian Alvarez has revealed WWE's production style was developed by Dunn, but there are other people there that like the shaking and the zooming and the cuts. People there like it. So if that's sticking around for the time being, let's focus on all the former stars getting brought back by Daddy Trips. Following Fightful Select reporting Shawn Michaels has been tasked with bringing Johnny Gargano back to WWE, Monday's episode of Raw had several subtle references to him. Champa locking in Johnny's signature Gargano escape submission, and Corey Graves said on commentary, if you want something done, do it yourself. A reference to Champa and Gargano's tag team together, DIY. It's very similar to the subtle nods to Cody Rhodes in the weeks before he made his return at WrestleMania. Now, speaking at an Asylum virtual signing, Gargano spoke about the WWE returns of people like Dakota Kai and Karrion Cross and said, I've seen, I've noticed. It's exciting times all around. You never know what could happen. Keep watching. Candice and I are going to show up at some point, wherever that may be. I promise we will. We'll be making some magic at some point in the future. I promise. But as great as Gargano's return would be, there's one free agent return that would be far, far bigger. Thanks for your support on Patreon, AA Ron Turner, and the roller coaster, Robert Acosta. You too can get your own shout out by going to patreon.com forward slash wrestle talk. Over the weekend, Bray Wyatt posted his first tweet since Triple H had been made head of WWE Creative. In typical Bray style, it's a cryptic poem, referencing everything from The Undertaker to Ring of Honor. Replying to fan speculation of whether this could mean an imminent appearance in either WWE or AEW, Wyatt posted, It's not meant to be cryptic. It's a reminder to myself and others that need reminding just how special this business is and how lucky we are to have it. Be your microscope and biases aside and read it again. Hashtag doo doo. In other words, he knows exactly what he's doing. Stop teasing me, Bray! Since then, though, Bray's former Wyatt family brother, Eric Rowan, who now wrestles as Eric Redbeard, tweeted following Monday's episode of Raw Patient persistence sometimes leads to interesting doorways. Considering the likes of Cross, Kai, and Loomis, released wrestlers who have been rewarded with a WWE return because they haven't yet signed for AEW, that doorway could definitely be interpreted as a path back to WWE. And because because speculation of mania is running wild, brother. Bray and Braun also back to WWE confirmed. But it's not just free agents who are considering WWE returns now Triple H is in charge. It seems like contractually signed AEW wrestlers are thinking about it too. Mero's social media activity over the weekend implies he's not best pleased with his role in AEW right now. First expressing frustration that a relatively unknown guy from another promotion, Mance Warner, was getting a title shot on Friday's Rampage, and then like in a tweet that read, are you still in AEW? Seems like you had it better in WWE. That person is forgetting Mero's time in WWE. Mero signed a four-year extension with AEW back in March, which will take him through to 2026. He's currently 37 years old, and he had previously said he'd likely hang up his boots at the end of this contract. But now, speaking to Renee Paquette on her Sessions podcast, Mero's stance has changed, citing how great his body feels when he's only wrestling once a week, rather than the intense schedules he had on the road with WWE. I think after this contract, I thought I was going to be done. I can go more. Mero's a smart guy. With WWE now a far more viable option in the future, it makes sense to delay your retirement. Because if the business continues to stay this competitive over talent, you could be set to make a lot of money playing both sides off each other. Speaking of... There's been a slight update from Dave Meltzer on MJF, who tweeted, Everything is secretive, but everyone in AEW assumes he's coming back at some point, but they don't know for sure, and Khan hasn't told anyone as far as I know. MJF hasn't been seen or mentioned on AEW TV since early June following his pipe bomb promo on the company. AEW star and trainer Dustin Rhodes, meanwhile, has his own brand of diplomacy, saying in a recent interview, If he contracts up and you've had enough with AEW, go, go, get the f*** 